This is ultimate and practical guide for all filmmakers and freelancers who want to start color grading your footage using DaVinci Resolve. In this video, I will show you the best setting, explaining the color node tree I prefer to use, and give you a downloadable node tree DRX so you can apply this workflow right away. And of course, I will show you how to apply it. I summarize my seven years of working and learning experience in film and video production industry into this video. Hope. One, I can provide you some value and save you some time when learning color grading. Two, when I hire an editor for my company, I want them to learn our company's color grading workflow, so I can use this video as a teaching guide. So without further ado, let's start. So when working in DaVinci, the first thing you should set up before you're doing color grading is to make sure your cover is set at right cover space. So for that, let's click this tool icon and go to Cover Management. So copy this setting, this one will give you a wider color space to work with, and this will make sure your export video will look the same as a standard internet video. Let's save them and move to the next exciting part, coloring. Here I put a sequence of video I shot when I traveled back to China to see my grandmother and grandfather. I want to greet them for the memory of my own. And I think it's a good opportunity to show you guys how you can elevate your shot using just color. Because this shot definitely has no help of lighting or bigger crew. They are all shot by myself and done by a humble consumer mirrorless camera. So if you want a detailed breakdown of how I color grading this sequence, I will link a video right here, or you can find it in my channel after this video. It's really an application tutorial of what you will learn it from this video today. So, ready for my note tree? But don't scare away. Here you are. This is quite easy to understand after I explain everything, I promise. By the way, you can download this note tree in the link below. This is how you apply it. So after you download, click Import with Output LUT and choose the one you download, right click and uh, select apply grade. So maybe you can download this node tree and learn it with me. I will show you how my node tree is structured and show you how to adjust them individually and maybe some tips and tricks along the way. So make sure you don't miss out. So first one, noise reduction. You want to make your image nice and clean before you color grading. So you can go to the motion effects here and select your frames. Frames here means if you have lots of motion in your shots, I recommend go with a lower number to analyze each frame. If you have a still shot, I recommend go with a higher number so you can eliminate repetitive frames to save you some computer power as well as exporting time. And then you need to drag up your the temporal threshold and spatial threshold to create a desired noise reduction level. But here is a trick. I recommend unlink them both and only focusing on adjusting the coma level because the coma level corresponding to color noise in your shots. The color noise is often makes the image look very cheap, but the black and white noise sometimes are more pleasing to the eyes, which is the luma level. Let's reset it and move on to the next one. Next one is highlight. Remember, don't overexpose or clip your shot in the beginning. Here is a note for that. Let's go to the color wheel. Here you have a highlight you can adjust directly. So usually we pull down the highlights to save some information in your shot. Let's reset it and move on to the next one. Shadow, same thing. You want to keep as much information as possible for later. So here you have a shadow section. We usually turn the number up depending on the shot. Let's reset it here and move on to the next one. White balance. You have a variety of way of addressing the white balance, but here is top three popular one. First, you can adjust things the temp and the tint level, or you can select this white drop. Find a middle gray or white subject in the image and click it to let the computer know, oh, this is the right white level. Or if you feel really energetic today, you can actually use this full coloring wheel to create a desired white balance. Let's move on to next one, exposure. For exposure, I like to go to this color wheel section and adjusting these four wheels. They are corresponding to shadow, mid-tone, highlight, and overall exposure. Let's reset it and move to the next one. Contrast. You can do it in an easy way. Easy way is to just increase the contrast number, or you can do a curve which i prefer right here you may heard of s curve it's very popular way to add contrast to your shots but here is a trick i usually go to this three dots and enable splines 
then you will have this leading curve to S curve. Now you can adjust your S curve more precisely and get a more subtle and natural look. But that's for the next video. By the way, in this note tree, you will have a three note that you can use adding contrast to your shots. I will talk about them later. This one, contrast is the first one. Moving on, saturation, simple. Saturation, you can just go to the color wheel and adjust the saturation right here. Reset, moving on. Okay, this section is a bundle. I call them the look, aka what cover you want in your overall cover scene. Here I use a parallel notes. See the three line over here? Unlike the serial notes, one overlap to each other, parallel notes, they are not affecting each other. Each notes are all collecting the information from the previous notes. So it can be useful for a situation like this. I want to adjust my shadow separately, highlight cover separately, and overall look separately. So here I name block shadow. So you can go to your log wheel and adjusting your shadow color here. I want to make it more teal. I just drag it to more teal side. Here, I put the name Log Highlight. Same thing, you go to adjusting your highlight here. Next one, overall look. You can basically do crazy stuff right here in your color wheel or log wheel, depending how you want the image to be. Remember I said I have three notes that I use for adjusting the contrast. After you dial in the color you like, right click the look and go to composition mode and choose soft light. See, the image will become very contrasty. This is very easy way to add contrast. Obviously, this image it doesn't look good right now because we didn't adjust the previous stuff. But let's reset the notes and move on to the next one. By the way, if you want to add additional parallel notes, select the note you want and hit Alt P. So you will add additional note below that. Let's uh, reset this note tree. Moving on. Next one is bleach bypass filter. You may or may not heard about this word. Actually, many films like uh, Seven, Dunkirk, Star Wars, The Last Jedi are all using this technique in their coloring. I think the image looks very dope. I learned it about two years ago, and since then, I constantly go back to this technique. So I just add this preset to my note tree. If I want to use it, I just hit Ctrl D to pop this up. And this note is my third option to add more contrast to the shot. And also the bleach bypass filter will desaturate your image a little bit. I customarily made this note more blue shift, like you can see it from the color wheel. Download it and try it out. Next one, the CST color space transform. This one is important. This one is where you tell in system what camera you are shooting with and what color space you want to work on. I want to output as regular night color. And here I choose Xinyang film lock. The reason why I choose Xinyang film lock is because the next notes I'm using a lot. LUT really optimize when the color space you provide is a Xenion film lock. So here I use a very popular LUT, which Da Vinci already include. You can find it in the LUT section, Film Look Kodak 2383 LUT. This LUT is really a secret of how people can achieve the classic teal and orange look. Obviously, you can lower down the LUT output from here, select like this icon and the lower down the cover output to adjust the level you want. Next, skin note. I think this note is one of the most important notes because uh, people recognize their face cover at the first glance. So if you don't make the skin tone looks correct, your image well looks cheap no matter what. This image so far doesn't really represent well with the skin tone. Let's move to this one. Copy and paste here. Let's lower down the exposure to make the level looks more right. Okay, for skin tone, I usually use this color picker and the click and drag the skin tone I like, hit shift H to show the selection you have and go to the waveform and uh, select the uh, vector scope. Here you can go to the setting and turn on the skin tone indicator. I already turned it on. This skin tone indicator is really we call it a perfect skin tone. So here you can see it's uh, the, my skin color is more towards blue so let's go drag it up to the purple side using the color wheel here so now you see before and after using ctrl d also to denoise your selection 
as well as uh, let's hit Ctrl H again, as well as blur the radius. So your covering will blend better with the uh, pixel beside it. Move on to the next one, lips. Same principle. If you have lips in your shot, usually after that, after all the color grading adjustment, the lips will be squared. I it's, it's based on my experience. So I use a color dropper again and just select the lip and adjust the color correspondingly. Next one, the last section. Basically, if you put this five note in a blender, you will get your film look. First one, sharpen. You can make your image more crispy by go to this section, blur, blur, and uh, lower down the radius. More low you lower it down, the more sharp your pixel is. But too much is too much. So I usually go with uh, 0 0.5. 4, 8, which is my preset setting. When I turn on, 0 0.48 is already set. And next one, glow. Let's turn on that. Whoa, you see that? Highlight part of your image suddenly bloom out. Glow will make your image look more natural than digital, more soft. Glow on the highlight will look, it makes the image more pleasing. Here you can adjust the threshold to find a desired level. Uh, you can hit Ctrl D to turn it off and turn it on to check the before and after. Obviously, you can go through the section here to get more precise look. Next one, chelation. If you zoom in and look closely to the high contrasty edge, when you turn it on, you can see there's a additional glow in this area, blending the edge better with the rest of the image, which you can often find it from the vintage camera and vintage lens combination. Let's turn it off and move on to the next one. Color adjustment. Here I give my image a last therapy of the color balancing. Make sure each color is at the proper hue and saturation. For that, I'm using hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, and the hue versus luma panel to adjust the light. For example, you see this blue color are uh, popping out saturation. So you can select the, the two sides and the lower down the blue level to your liking. Also, if you go to hue versus hue, you can change the blue color as well. Last one, grain. Let's turn it on, not very much, but if you zoom into the detail, you can see we dirty the shots up. The grain, it's like the last sprinkle of salt for your image to make your digital image more like a film. That's why the green notes should be put in the last because I don't want the noise mess up the image at the beginning and also mess up every step in the later. So here is my note tree explained. And of course, lastly, I put a final note in the end just in case I want to make any additional adjustment before picture lock. So I hope you find this tutorial useful. And next time, I will use this note tree to show you how to color grade this sequence correctly or at least logically. So maybe I will find you in this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.